we present Style Video GAN, a temporal generative model using a pre-trained style GAN. The goal of this work is as follows. We are given one single video of one subject that is about 5 to 10 minutes long. We want to train a temporal GAN, which should learn the characteristic motion performed in this video and be able to generate new, unseen, plausible videos that look like the training video. In addition, we want these generated videos to be of high resolution and arbitrary duration. Last but not least, our generator should be able to produce videos depicting a great number of random subjects even though it was trained on only one single identity. So how are we going to do this? Before we look at our actual architecture, here a bit of math. Assuming that we wanted to generate frames at a resolution of 1024 times 1024 pixels, our generator would have to produce 1024 times 1024 times 3 outputs per frame, which for 25 frames already amounted to 78.6 million outputs. We do not want to pay that price, so we break the problem down to a lower dimensional one. This is done by reconstructing our training video with the Pixel 2 Style Network by Richardson et al, turning a sequence of frames into a sequence of latent codes that live in the space W+, which is an extension of the latent space of StyleGAN. StyleGAN can turn such W+, codes back into images, but at our training time, StyleGAN is completely absent. Our task is now to produce not sequences of frames anymore, but sequences of W+, vectors, which for 25 frames now only amounts to 0.2 million outputs. To generate such sequences, we train a Wasserstein gun. Its generator needs to be recurrent, because we want to be able to generate arbitrary length output after training, but the critic only ever sees a fixed temporal window of 25 frames and so does not need to be recurrent. With this basic architecture, we are now able to learn the motion in the training video. However, in order to generate videos that are longer than the temporal window we use at training time, we still need to solve one problem, and that is looping. Without any special precautions, we have observed that our network architecture tends to make the course of the generated sequence depend only on the initialization input i, and not on the per time step randomness s. As we show here, this can lead to generated videos looking unnaturally repetitive. To prevent this, we have a look at the difference D between the first latent code and last latent code produced within our generator. If we compute the gradient of D with respect to I and with respect to S, we observe that the two-dimensional arrow defined by these components usually points exclusively into the direction of I. That's why we penalize angles of this vector that are lower than some threshold. The resulting videos are much less likely to contain looping. So far, we only generated videos of the training identity. In order to generalize to a virtually infinite number of random identities, we do not even have to change our architecture or training procedure. Instead, we will make use of the very advantageous properties of the W plus space. For more details, please see our manuscript and the references to Shen et al., Tevari et al., and Herkönen et al. Here is the intuition. Our training dataset is a point cloud in W plus space. Our generator has learned to walk on paths on a manifold that fits this point cloud. Let's assume that we are given a new, remote point in W plus space for example one that was sampled from Stargon's W space, which is a subset of W+. If the local neighborhood around this remote point was structured in the same way that the neighborhood around our training identity is, we could shift all generated motion from that neighborhood to the new neighborhood. Here is what that would look like.
The main reason why this does not work seems to be that the neighborhoods in W space are very different from the one in which our training video is embedded after we've reconstructed it with pixel to style. That is why we render the new remote point with style gun and then reconstruct it with pixel to style as well. This gives us a new point, not necessarily with the exact same identity, but still with a plausible one. If we shift to that point, the result already looks much better. However, we can improve this even further. The result you've just seen was computed by choosing the mean of the training point cloud as a local anchor. The vector pointing from this anchor to the remote point is the offset by which we shift sequences. We could of course have chosen different points, which all would have led to different results. We have found that to compute a decent local anchor point, it works well to compute a PCA basis of the training points. In the real W plus space, this basis should have around 32 vectors, but on this slide we limit ourselves to only one. Then we project the remote point onto the space spent by this basis to find our local anchor. As you can see, the pose and expression of the sequence generated for the training identity is transferred to the new identity in a more accurate way now. We now can generate after training on only one single subject, face videos of virtually infinitely many random, unseen subjects. Now that we have motivated all the components of our full technique, let's compare to some previous methods. For this comparison, all methods were trained on the same training video. The first difference we notice is that, except for Tian et al., no previous method is able to generate even remotely the resolution that ours produces. Also with the exception of Tian et al., previous methods are unable to generalize to unseen random identities. While Tian et al. are able to match our work in these respects, their training process includes the StyleGun network, which makes it significantly more costly than ours. Also, the samples they generate lack the articulated poses and expressions that our method managed to learn from the training video. As a proof of concept for the possibility to apply our method to content categories other than faces, we have also applied it to hand videos. For this purpose, we recorded around 100,000 video frames of a hand, which we then used to train a style gun model and a corresponding inverter model. To train our temporal architecture, we used three additional sequences, each about five minutes long. Each of these sequences can be embedded in the latent space of our style gun model with high precision. After training our method on each of the 5 minute sequences, with a temporal window of 75 frames, the resulting models have learned to count, to sign, and to perform a less structured floating motion. So even though we focused on face videos in this work, the general design of our pipeline is not face specific. In principle, it could work for all image categories for which a pre-trained style gun and encoder network are available. Thank you for watching.